let's not do that. All right, we are live. Welcome to the journey within. This is a journey of deconstruction and reconstruction of a death and rebirth. And I have someone who has his own story of a death and a rebirth. I have fear to love coach Sean Wang in the house. How you doing, man? How you doing, bro? You know, uh, my Instagram uh, is literally Sean's in the house. <laughs> is it really? That's funny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm doing pretty good, man. Doing pretty well, you know. I uh, usually don't like to put these things to words because really you cannot, you know, it, it doesn't matter, honestly. How about you? Yeah, man, I'm actually doing pretty good. Mm. And feeling into my body. Mm. Yeah. So I can usually feel all the different parts. Right now it's not mm. it's not bad. Usually I'm I'm feeling more anxiety, right? Which would be a great because we're talking about fear, right? Because you're a fear to love coach. And I just want I just want to thank you for being here, man. Mm. And maybe you can share a little bit about kind of your story, your journey within and how you became a fear to love coach and what that is yeah of course um i think like many of us who get started in this self-development type of thing i've started out super sensitive i was that that i was that sensitive kid always ever since i was a little boy you know i had a uh, language impediment when i was little so that kind of like made me the outcast in schools and like especially in elementary school where i would be constantly bullied and you know at the time you know like since that grew to a very strong resentment towards my own towards all those bullies towards life mm. and that resentment really reflected especially in my high school years so i had moments where i felt so not good enough where well, i felt so angry actually where i just wanted to shoot up the entire school i was in because i was seeing kids although you know they're nice in high school because people mature when they get older it's like when you see pe the faces of your bullies it's kind of it stirs up a lot of inner anger, a lot of traumas that you haven't processed yet. Yeah. And, you know, like, I, I've i gone deep into, like, the pickup shit after, you know. <laughs> hey, we all do. Well, I say we all, but a lot of guys, yeah. I get yeah. It. We all get deep into that shit. I wasn't that deep, but, you know, I read a few books, got a few online <laughs> Programs and uh, I came across his uh, Ruse's stuff. I think you know him, Boundless. Mm -hmm. uh, at the time, was like what, like the real masculine? Yeah. So like, I just did the work with him, and that's where he introduced me to inner work. So it's really stumbled across me very accidentally, you know. But at the same mm -hmm. time. With this inner work, it's always been with you, you know. You just never noticed, which is really something I've noticed when I look back into my life. You know what I mean? Well, can you explain that? I'm not sure, and, and maybe I just missed that. You said this inner work has always been with you. Is that? Yeah, yeah, it has. Like, um, although, uh, although, yes, I got myself to know inner work af after I was taught it, I had little spiritual awakenings even beforehand. Like like before I said that uh, uh, when I was a little boy, I had this many spiritual awakening where I was 12. It was a day after I was bullied, so angry, so actually very sad, depressed when I was walking home, kind of feeling hopeless. And... I just thought, look, and it was completely spontaneous, but the th I looked at that thought, and it was completely temporary, by the way. I wasn't lying or anything at that moment, but I just looked at the thought. It's like, is this happening to me right now, this thought? Is it around me right now, this feeling? 
you know, of being hopeless or being bullied. Like, am I actually a victim of my past? Or is, is this a past around me? And I looked around me, I'm like, no, the past isn't around me. What's around me are trees, the sky. <laughs> it's not around me, right? And I realized, wait, then what's my past? I'm like, oh shit, imagination. <laughs> interesting man so even yeah before so you kind of had this moment of like transcendence from your pain and and who you were and who you are yeah yeah like a mini transcendence like like it kind of like got me through what i had to go through at the time like it got me kind of over the bullying by 15 <laughs> percent so, hey man it's better than zero yeah yeah 15 percent it is better to, than zero, you know, like, yeah. And I think that gave me the courage, you know, realizing that and getting and feeling that space, actually, to me, that moment kind of was like a turning point where I was super 100% identified with that feeling to just feeling at least a little bit of space, you know, knowing that, okay, it's an imagination. It's not really me. Hmm. <laughs> hmm imagination is not really you our thoughts and our feelings yeah, yeah they're tricky yeah they are tricky and in a way like you do hypnosis but you know our lives we hypnotize ourselves into believing shit that is not 100 percent, man um this is so i want to go back to something because this is really interesting to me um because I mean, the past several years, we've seen so many, you know, tra tragedies, school shootings. I think, actually, maybe just a few days ago, um, I think I might have read something like another school shooting happened, which is just insane. Mm -hmm. But you, you said you were almost on that, on the edge of that, right? Yeah. What made you, because like, you know, I guess you can see like two paths, right? Mm -hmm. Why didn't you take that path versus taking the path of, you know, trying to transcend the pain or just working on yourself and whatnot. I guess, you know, because again, I was just really, I liked the idea of it. Like, like the anger just wanted to express itself. Okay. And it just kind of like, oh, school shooting, best way to express myself. <laughs> but like, it wasn't, I wasn't so deep into it. I think some kids, they get so deep into that hole that they actually, but you know what? They had years and years beforehand where they were like, you know, contemplating whether they should do it or they're just experimenting with that idea. For me, yes, I liked the idea, but it wasn't that deep into, I wasn't that deep in that hole that yet, yet. Until I decided to, you know, like go to college and then, you know, I didn't see them anymore. So like, there's no triggers. Interesting, wow. Well, I'm glad that happened, man. Yeah. Because now you, you actually help people, you know, get over that, the the resentment and all those things. Um, so maybe it'd be safe to say, like, the people who, and we're generalizing here, right? Yeah. People who go down that hole, obviously, they have some trauma. Obviously, they're, they've they been very, very hurt. And, mm -hmm. uh, but they just kept on kind of maybe festering, like, just they just kept on looping that same those same thoughts over and over and over and the resentment grows grows builds because that, that's all they focus on yeah 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 it it sticks on to you you know sticks on to you and you get sucked into it it's not a good feeling it's you know when you release on something you don't want to get too sucked into it actually you have you could acknowledge it and let it go but hmm. that's that's when this gets dangerous, when you get really sucked into that story and completely identify with it. And yeah. feel like every anyone in this world is everyone in this world is completely innocent, you know? Everyone in this world. They're complete I don't want to say they're victims, but it's best I th I guess in this way I'll just say they're complete victims of their own identities, their own conditioning, you know? And it's, it, it, yeah, those situations are sad. <laughs> it is. Yeah. And I, 
one way I kind of distinguish between, so in a sense, they are definitely victims, right? Because mm -hmm. we, we can go into their psychology and their past and their conditioning. We can understand, okay, this is why that happened. And that's very, very tragic. And at the same time, you know, we want to hold them responsible for their actions. Not be like, oh, you know, they can do whatever they want. You know, I think there's a balance, right? Like there's one thing about taking blame and blaming yourself and others versus taking responsibility. Yeah. Um, that's how, that's kind of how I uh, distinguish that. But so uh, maybe we can go, go into actually, cause you, you talked about releasing and not identifying with the story. Mm. Like, what do you mean for people who aren't familiar with releasing? Like, what is that? And, and how did you use that to, to really help yourself transform? Okay. So releasing is, I mean, releasing, it really speaks for itself, man. Just releasing your baggage, <laughs> you know, there's nothing more to explain it. It's kind of like, you know, you're holding, it's like, you know, I, this is what I've been taught that, you know, we're all, we're the sky and the resistances, whatever comes up are the clouds, right? Now, the you know, resistances, they really do want to go. It's just that we keep holding on to what does not serve us. Like we're like putting a string against like a cloud and holding it be like, you're not going anywhere, I'm keeping you. And that's where the problem is where we just, we just hold on to our resistance rather than processing it and letting it flow like the river, you know? And the thing is, is that it is what Bruce taught us to, you know, like, Feelings do want to go, and uh, it the uh, only thing with releasing is not about wanting it to let go, but just fully processing that emotion and allowing that emotion itself to leave on its own. And it's kind of like it's when you don't know when you haven't experienced it. It's kind of weird to understand, but you cannot force the feeling to leave. It's kind of like a kind of like a little child, you know, it's kind of like not a separate being, but like it, it needs to leave on its own. And that's where a real release comes. You know what I mean? Yeah. So for someone who hasn't quite experienced that and mm -hmm. I remember being there and I was just like, I don't get this. I don't know. <laughs> like I'm in, I'm in my head the whole time, mm -hmm. um, you know, for someone who's never experienced this. You know, how do we actually, what's maybe like the first couple of steps that we can take to process an emotion? Okay. I think uh, when you process an emotion, we, ask, we also have to be aware that we cannot get sucked into it, right? So first, the first step, is that that's what everyone, every coach knows to do is to welcome up that feeling. Allow yourself to welcome the thoughts, sensations, sounds that come with it. For me, I focus very much on the body sensations. Where is this feeling reside in my body? You know, many people could be in their head. It could be in their chest, stomach, back. Be aware of that because your body, your body is very important, man. <laughs> and when you welcome that feeling, Allow yourself to just ask, just find a little sense of wisdom in that feeling. Like, why am I feeling this way? Right? For example, if I'm feeling shame, right? It's like, what's the benefit I get from feeling shame? Like, really, what is the benefit you get? And the answer you get usually is, it's trying to protect me. And it's trying to make me feel safe. Is Sometimes it's better to ask yourself, is this feeling trying to protect me and make me feel safe? The answer is yes. Then, okay, if it's trying to help me, is it on my side? Yes, it's on your side. Well, if it's on your side, is, is the method working? No. Nope. Most of the time it's not, right? So if the method is not working, and you could use the Sedona method if you want, I just bring it out there, you know, could you let that go? And if it's possible, would you? When? 
and that's the invitation to say now. It's it's something like that, you know. There are many ways of releasing, which you know we could get into like a long discussion about. <laughs>、mm. Yeah, no, no, there are definitely, I, and I kind of categorize a lot of things as "quote unquote" releasing, right? Yes.、Um, I think the Sedona method, that layout, is a good introduction. Yes. And like, just like what you were talking about, are you allowing and welcoming? You know, are we able to just be aware of what's going on? Yeah, it's key, right? See, once you acknowledge that that feeling is trying to protect you, though,、mm-hmm. that out of that feeling too, kind of not being like, oh shit. So is this just like a little survival mechanism that I have? Is not personal. Does not mean I'm a complete dick, or does not mean I'm like not good enough. It just means those thoughts are coming up because you know, this wants to protect me. So it, 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 you get little realizations when you ask yourself these type of questions. Yeah. No, that's good. So it's like once we become aware of what's going on, we ask some good questions, really、mm. introspecting, going within. And then you're able to almost like change the meaning or the perception of that particular emotion or belief. Yeah, and it's not only about changing it. I don't like the word change. It's kind of because people might be like, "Oh, I'm just changing my story. I'm changing my story to a better one or something." But there's still stories. The thing is, is that you're letting go of stories itself, and just seeing things just the way they are. Not seeing for any story, you're just seeing things just the way they are, and that's what our goal is through releasing. You know,、mm. the way I like to do is just welcome up that feeling and just, you know, acknowledge again that it's trying to protect you and being like, okay, thank you, I love you, thank you, just thank you for being there for me. You know, give it pr- appreciation that at least is trying, and then just be like, I'm committed. To seeing this feeling just the way it is, and not my own projection of it, and just feel into it. Feel into that space you feel afterwards. It's good, man. I'm feeling into it. <laughs> I, can't, I can't get too lost on the podcast, but <laughs> yeah, that was good.、Um, boy, I actually had a question there, but. Oh well, so I, I want to go back and and working with Ruse and and doing this inner work.、Mm. What do you think were some of like the aha moments? You know, where it's like, oh, I get it, or、mm. even after after working with Ruse. Yeah, yeah. You know, are there any moments that are just like, oh, light bulb? Oh, many times, many times, bro. Again, you no, know, it's kind of like that mini spiritual awakening I had when I was a little kid. That kind of Once I started working with Ruse, when I started having a coach, I started having those aha moments much more accelerated, much more. It's happening much more, basically. And you know, I had this one moment where, although I wasn't fully like, although I had this one moment where I realized, like, I had this one night where I just was like, you know what? I'm just completely surrender to God. God's will, and see what happens. I just did that one night just for fun, you know. And that night was completely crazy. Like, and I, I think I made an article about, it, but like, a post about, it, but like, I, I asked like, who am I, right? And that just came very naturally. You completely surrender to God, or universe, whatever fuck you want to call it. But like. I surrender to that and、I、ask, "Who am I?" I'm like, "Yeah, I'm Sean." You know, Sean. You know, that's that's the obvious answer. Okay, who's Sean? I'm like,、uh, I don't know. And then all the personality traits I thought I had just spilled out. Like, oh, you know, I'm just a nice kid, kind kid. I was bullied. You know, I'm not funny. You know, some positive things too. Like, oh yeah, I could get the ladies. You know, or Some things like, oh, he's so insecure and so sensitive, and all those things just came up, you know, my entire past. And then, 
one question came to me when those things came up and like, is that real? And I realized, <laughs> no, it's not real, man. And then, and then that got me questioning, like, then what, what is real? You know, what is it? What's all this entire story of who I am? If it's not real, why do I believe it's real? If it's not real, right? And it's like, and then my intuition was telling me it's because you're trying to be a character. You're trying to be someone who you're not. Then why? And I'm like, okay, if I'm not this, if I'm trying to be this character and this character is not me, then what about the entire story? What about my family? What about how I grew up, you know? And it's like, and just, I remembered, I took acting classes before. And, you know, whenever you would study a character, you have to act, you actually go very deep into their story. So you could fully embody this character, right? And that just fully, that just came up. I was like, wait, I need this story so I could believe in this character, that I believe I am this character. I need those stories I'm telling myself so I could believe I'm Sean, you know? Because without those stories, there's no Sean, right? Without those thoughts, there's no Sean. And then that's the moment when I realized, oh, shit, that's not who I am. <laughs> Dude, that's deep, man. And so when, when you realize, when you realize, oh, that's not who I am. Mm. Did you then realize who you were? A little bit, a little bit. Still, I had a lot to grow. I think the moment when I truly realized who I was was when I had to really fully experience that feeling of desirelessness and that feeling of death, literal death. And I, 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 it's, it's weird to say, to be honest, but like, you know, I guess that was just kind of like um, just the appetizer of what yet I had to experience. <laughs> mm. Yeah, no, that's good. Yeah, this is like the, yeah, the appetizer is a good word. I was trying to find another word for it, but yeah, <laughs> a little taste, taste of what's to come. Yeah, taste of what's to come. I haven't eaten the full menu yet. <laughs> yeah. And that's a good analogy because you, you, um, you do cooking as well, right? So yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Thank you, man. I was just making a menu just before our call. It's like I was trying to do like an Italian menu, and just like it, it's, 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 it's just first thing that comes up. What can I say? <laughs> yeah, no, I get it. Interesting. So, how how do how do you get into these states of of maybe like egolessness or love or whatever you want to call it, where you're like surrendered to God? Is there any, like any process that you use that maybe we can copy? Mm. Thing is, is that when you surrender to God, the only way I can say, the thing is, is that every person's different. They have their own pace. They have their own, yeah, pace of growth, basically, spiritual growth. Some people, they may take years and years to feel like a moment of oneness. And that's, that's me being honest with you. For me, I'm very lucky that it's really quick. I feel, I feel like for me, I'm just lucky enough to even like have those spiritual awakenings, even before I did this work, you know? And I, I don't know, I can't explain that shit. But the thing I could explain is that when you completely surrender and the more you let go, these aha moments, little spiritual awakenings you get they come super very naturally they come on their own you cannot force them to happen you cannot the only thing i could only give is dedication you can only be dedicated if you're dedicated even though when you're feeling like down, even though when you're not having those aha moments even though when you feel stale in your spiritual growth in your at least, you know, healing growth. 
stick to, stick stick with that dedication because when i was healing that was the only thing i knew like that's the only thing i cared about man like healing letting go I was, and i think a big part of it was because my intuition was telling me if i don't heal everything if i don't heal everything if i don't fully get immersed in those tools that i was given i will live the same life i was always living when i was really depressed you know insecure and just that fire in me was telling me i can't go through that anymore it'll be a missed opportunity we don't want missed opportunities right so at that time you know like that was the most important thing to me just healing yeah, yeah. it's like the pain actually drove you into this this these spiritual these many spiritual awakenings yeah yeah exactly it's it's although you know i never was the type to be like yo i'm going to find the truth i believe in god and all that shit wasn't like really my parents you know no one like i can't come from a family that has no religious background actually we're just you know chinese people <laughs> <laughs> no, Chinese people have some religious beliefs. It depends on who they are, but yeah. Yeah. Just with history, you know, like many religions and cultures were stripped away from Chinese people, especially in the mainland part, you know. If you're in like, you know, Hong Kong or, you know, if you're in places where it's more it depends which region you're from essentially. Yeah. That's a whole that's a history lesson. <laughs> but like uh yeah so i was never the type to actually consciously know yes i'm here to seek the it was more that fire was in me but i didn't know you know what i mean interesting the fire was within you but you didn't know you yeah. think you think that everyone has that fire 100% i think some people everyone has a potential for that fire but you know what I can't control how interested someone is in healing. Right? Some people are deep in their shit, but they're like, you know, so casual about it, you know, they're like, "Oh, yeah, you want to heal me? Okay, let me try it for one session, you know." Like they don't take that shit seriously, you know? Some people they're stuck in their shit, but they choose to be stuck in their shit. Why? So why do you think that people are are choosing to be stuck in their shit. What's stopping us? Number one, I feel like because of the unfamiliarity. Big thing is that they don't want to know what they don't know. They don't want to know the unknown, basically, right? <laughs> they they don't understand too. If you don't understand something, how can you like want to go through this healing process, right? To so the average Joe. Who has no idea about healing, spirituality, you know, hypnosis, any of that shit, you know, how is he gonna think about the shit we talk about? He's gonna be like, that's interesting, but you know, probably not for me, you know? People have also people's beliefs as well, right? Our conditioning. If you believe in something so strongly, then, and if you feel like your life is already not bad, you know, why would you want to change that? You know, even though there's a lot to explore inside of you. That's the thing. But that's fine, though. It's perfect as it is, you know. As humans, you know, no, not everyone will fully heal. Not everyone will go through the, that process fully, you know. That's completely fine. Because if everyone did, just imagine, like, society will be completely gone if everyone was enlightened right <laughs> what's the if you're if you're enlightened there's no point of like you feel purpose to help others but really you don't care whether you die right a normal average joe at least they derive pleasure they get some sort of benefit from things outside of them and that gives them some sort of purpose to live right if everyone has no purpose to live and they're all completely like in bliss, you know, like 
what is their what's the point of living right <laughs> it's a whole worldly death <laughs> so let me ask what do you think do you think our purpose is to get to that state of enlightenment if you want to <laughs> if you want to not everyone's purpose is that not everyone's purpose is that depends on who you are what what you're meant to do in life some people they're meant not to do it and i'm not saying in a bad way i'm not saying oh i'm in this bad place and sean's saying that you know some people are not meant to do it. that means i'm not meant to do it no i don't mean that but i mean in the end of the day and are you familiar with actually at the end of the day what i this is what i feel is real is that what God wants for us will happen anyways. So the thing is, is that it's beautiful in its own sense. Sometimes I look at couples together, you know, they might be, so, I see, I walk by couples, I walk, walk by dogs and I look at them like so beautiful, you know, why would I want to change that? You know, if someone's stuck in their own shit, you know, I don't mean any disrespect, but like, in, in, in its own little way, it's beautiful and innocent at the same time, you know? I don't want to change them and make them fully enlightened, you know? <laughs> There's no mm. change anything. It's completely perfect, you know? What we're doing is that we're just offering another way of living to anyone who's interested. That's it. We're just tutors. <laughs> yeah, I like to think of us like... We're like guides, you know? Yeah. It's, I, I heard a spiritual teacher once say that I'm, I'm just a pointer to the Christ within. That's, that's all I am. Mm. And I just, that kind of stuck with me. I'm like, oh, that's good, man. Because eventually, you know, and I, I know, I think you were talking with Ruse about this too mm. on his podcast that, you know, eventually, you don't you don't need a coach or need a, a mentor or a therapist or anything like that maybe in the beginning right yeah yeah just to kind of get going but eventually i guess the goal of all this is we can become our own yeah and we can find that christ within yeah yeah and you know what i like how you say find that christ within because so much people misinterpret fucking christianity you know religions in general because like they see God as a separate entity that punishes you if you do something wrong. Kind of like a Santa Claus, you know? You're on his naughtiness. You're either on his naughty list or you're on, either on his good list. If you're on his naughty list, you're going to burn for eternity. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty much. It's, uh, yeah, it gets it gets worse. Uh, don't get me started. We're, we're not going <laughs> to go on a rabbit, rabbit trail. Um, <laughs> So I wanted to, to kind of come back to uh, fear. Yeah. Fear to love. Mm. Do you use that same exact process to go from fear to love where you know, you're just feeling it, you're allowing it to process, you're mm. able to let it go through either maybe like Sedona method or just asking some other questions mm. um, or is maybe fear something that's um, more unique? Fear is more unique. I never heard that before. <laughs> well, no, I'm just, I'm just asking, like, um, if, if you use that same process, like all emotions, and it's gonna work, and w like, are, are we actually gonna be able to? So let's say, like, I'm feeling some fear, right? I'm allowing it, I'm accepting it, I'm observing it, and just kind of feeling it in my body, right? Does that naturally go up into love? Mm. you know what depends how you approach fear that's mm. approach fear for me you know when i gone through that feeling of death and that was like fear amplified so strongly because i felt like i was actually dying after that that same i noticed that same feeling of fear and death turned into extraordinary ecstasy in my entire body like that fear that I was going to die, it kind of like changed itself, went up to my head, and I felt this entire tingling around my body. 
it was so crazy. <laughs> uh, so yeah, if it's possible for that to happen, yes, 100%. But will it happen for everyone? Depends. <laughs> Depends. And when I say that is because, you know, fear is so, it's, it's not a black and white thing, actually, with fear. It has so much different nuances, so much things to process that, you know, if you're stuck in the outer layer of fear, you know, that if you feel into it, you might get to shame, you might get to so much different things that you have to process. So it may not feel like you're going to love, but actually you're moving towards it. <laughs> so yeah, the end goal is always, the end part, who we really are is love, you know? Like everyone knows that, you know? When you're a little kid, most kids come into this world with blank slates. And that's who we are, we're that blank slate. We're that silence, you know? Right now, I'm feeling completely transparent in my entire body, you know? I don't feel like I'm separate. I just, it's weird. I feel like a window. <laughs> I don't know how that feels like, man. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I guess just clear my entire body, I guess. Mm. And um, when you feel into that fear, you know, a big part of it is also when you give into that fear, there's a part of you that believes that fear will help you subconsciously. Even though on the conscious level, maybe you're like, oh, yes, yeah, obviously not helping me. But deep down, you have not processed the fact that you still believe it might help you in any sort of, any sort of way, you know. And there's always a low key payoff you get from feeling this negative emotion. And that's what I know is when people hold on to these feelings, it's not because they're the victim, it's because subconsciously they choose to feel that way. They want, mm. they feel like that way of thinking will help them. That's, that needs to be let go of, that needs to be surrendered to God. That sense of control, that feeling that, okay, I, my way is right. My way of thinking right now is right, ever since I was a little kid. You have to have the integrity to let that go, surrender to God and be like, God, you're right, not me. God's right. I'm not right. You mm -hmm. know what's best for me. I don't know what's best for me. I don't know what's best for me. I see those, I see some posts on Facebook by some coaches and I'm not like saying they're bad. They're probably trying to relate to some people, but you're like, oh, you know, like, create your own life create the life that you want in my head i think that's that's complete bs because to me my life is full of surrender my life is full of i can control i cannot control what happens around me i go with the past of the path that i was given not the path that i want to go you know what i mean hmm. what's the difference between because like when i first started with with all this work mm. And I know I'm not alone on this. You know, people confuse maybe apathy with acceptance and vice versa. You know, can it kind of it can kind of look a little similar. So so when you talk about surrender and surrendering to your path, what's the difference between that? What does that look like versus oh, I'm just giving up and and what's the point of all this shit? And oh, I have no control of my life and you know. It's really simple. I, you know, I actually just talked to someone about it, feeling the same way. He's like, yo, I let go of my desire. And now I feel like, you know, I, my desire to do well in school. Now, like, I feel no motivation to do my schoolwork. <laughs> <laughs> right. And, and when I saw that, it was like so silly, so silly. <laughs> because the thing is, is that feeling of giving up, that feeling where you're surrendered to God, that egoic desire, like maybe he did surrender that egoic desire, but there's still many resistances attached to it that he's processing. So like, if he's not feeling clear in his body, if he's feeling numb, which is really very common with associated with apathy, 
if he's not feeling clarity in his entire body, if he's not feeling transparent like me, like a window, you know, he's definitely not fully surrendered to God. You know, there's still some control he's holding on to. And you have to, and you're right though, there is a nuance with that between acceptance, true acceptance, and giving up in apathy. They could feel very similar. You could confuse them actually, you know? But it's very, but I think an easy way to determine whether it's apathy or, you know, acceptance is that through acceptance, all that egoic desire is replaced with something new, some new purpose, a new drive, you know, a strong feeling of love towards the world, strong sense of integrity. If you don't feel like, you know, you could do anything, you know, if you don't feel like Superman, then there's no acceptance there. I mean, you know, not the way I'm talking about at least. That's interesting. There's yeah. No, uh, if you feeling like Superman. Yeah. I like that. <laughs> yeah. I've never actually had someone explain it like that. The way I explain it is like uh, acceptance is more, is close, excuse me, closer to like appreciation. It's mm. not quite, but it's like, it's kind of like on the same, same vein, you know, like you're acknowledging and there's almost a sense of appreciation. And it's light. Yeah. Yeah. But I like what you said there. Yeah, it 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 basically is appreciation. You that's part like that's a big part of it, you know. Appreciation what's around you, you know. When you're silent inside of you, truthfully, you see everything so beautiful, you know. <laughs> you know, it's almost amazing. Like me talking to you right now, you know. It, I'm so lucky to be here, you know, live another day, you know. Mm. I don't know when I'm going to die, man. <laughs> you don't know. You just, no, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> I like to think I do. But uh, yeah, no, you're just a very, you just have a very grateful attitude. Mm. Like everything you see is, is from that lens is what it feels like. Not, yeah, from maybe, yeah, for sake of explaining, you could say lens but I like to say that that's who we are, Divin. Like that's who we really are. Seeing things just the way they are. We're not seeing like, oh, we're the positivity lens. You know, like I'm positive. I'm grateful for everything. You know, like get like when you see things for the way they are, gratefulness naturally. That's not a lens. That's who you are. Mm. That's who you are. And it's uh. That's love. That's love, man. That's not a lens. Love can never be a lens. Love is always there, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And um, no, I like that. So it's it's kind of going back to um, what you were saying about kind of feeling into the emotions and maybe another emotion shows up, right? Mm. You process that and there are maybe, maybe a couple layers, maybe maybe more, right? But all the way to the core is love is what you're saying, right? 100 percent yeah yeah dude i gotta i, I want to ask you this question okay this is me my my curious question because i've i've sensed this so i don't i'm not in a state of love all the time mm. it's not but, but when these rare glimpses of when i am just in this i mean you can call it a heart awakening or whatever i'm just in love mm. in the state of love yeah i've noticed not all the time sometimes unnoticed that love has this like troll side like love is the i don't know if you've ever um experienced that a troll side yeah like love is like trolling all my other parts <laughs> it's like ah, not not in a way that's like like uh, yeah not like in a very der der derisive very like like a rude way or anything like that but it's almost like laughing because like I want you to see what I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, yeah. I don't know if you ever experienced that. No, I, I, I did, I did. I remember uh, when I was still healing, I was feeling still a lots of, you know, still lots of resistance come up. But for some reason, I just kept laughing. <laughs> I just kept laughing, even though those thoughts were coming up. I laughed, 
and not because I was purposely doing it. It just came naturally. Yeah. And then more I laughed, the thoughts were like, okay, this guy's not going to stop laughing. So they kind of went away. <laughs> yeah, dude. No, and and um, just from like a psychological behavioral pr perspective, mm -hmm. laughing is such a great pattern interrupt. Yeah, it's like you try try to feel, you know, the shame or the fear, and then if you laugh. It's like your brain doesn't know what to do. It's like what mm -hmm. the, and it breaks the pattern. Yeah, because love is so strong. Mm. The when you experience these low states of emotions. <laughs> The energy level they have is way lower than the energy of love. Way lower. Way lower. When you have one thought of love, that could really completely diminish a whole entire day's worth of negative thinking. And it's truthfully very... When you feel love, even f through a song, you know, it can make someone's day. When you feel love, when someone comes up to you and be like, you know, hey, how are you? You know, has a good conversation with you. And you feel that love from them, that makes your day. The little things like that is the reason why we're here, you know? we, Yes, you know, spiritual process are complete. At, the, at its core, it's, it's from us, but there's so much people who contributed to our growth. And without those people, we're we're nothing. Mm. there's this humble interdependence yeah you're talking about yeah yeah it's not interdependence like oh you make me complete <laughs> but yeah not like a dependence but like an interdependence where where recognizing hey i'm important i'm a person you're a person and then we, we need each other not not in like the the, the needy dependent way yeah 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 the thing, the thing is, is that we do need everyone. That we, we are dependent on everyone, you know. Like if it wasn't for many factors that other people have done for me, I wouldn't be where I am, right? You too, you know. Yeah. So it, it's now we've gotten our blessings. Now it's time for us to carry on the blessings we've been given to other people, you know. It's. That's our jobs as coaches or as people in general, you know. Some, you know, there are times when, you know, like I see the divine beauty in everything, you know. Like I fall in love with everything, bro. Like even a little trash can at work, I was looking at it. It's like, wow, it's so beautiful. <laughs> hmm. I'm curious, man. Do you love like the suffering in the world? Like like the really hard stuff, like the school shootings and things like that? Mm. Not in a sadistic way. <laughs> Not in a sadistic way. When I say I love everything, I don't mean when bad things happen, I'm like, oh yeah, nice. Keep doing that, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Like, I don't mean in that way, but I'm not going to be angry. I'm not going to be depressed of it, you know? Actually, when I see those situations, actually, I might feel a strong sense of compassion. I don't want that to happen. Yes, that's what I will feel very strongly about it, right? So maybe there might be a little bit of anger. Maybe, maybe. It depends on the situation, but it's not anger where oh why is this happening to the world why why like no no no, it's more like compassion strong mm. compassion it could be expressed many different ways even through anger you know for example if you see someone being abused and you're compassionate for that person being abused what are you going to do in a moment where someone's hurting them you're going to express anger right that's the thing so anger that's what I realized when I was in that healing mode, you know, I always thought, okay, be in a state of peace all the time, let everything go. Da, 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 da. But after I felt that feeling of death and that, and after I actually stopped letting go, cause right now there's nothing there to let go unless there's someone else's uh, 
resistances I'm picking up, which is a whole nother level. I, I, I just go with what I'm feeling in the moment. I go with God's will. And the thing is, is that there, 90% of the time I'm at peace, I'm happy, but 10% of the time, there might be moments where I might like, I might feel a slight surge of anger, like very mildly, but I still feel this strong compassion, like it's fueled by compassion, you know? Right, behind the, the anger, behind the anger is compassion. Behind that anger is compassion, not trauma. Mm. And that's why whenever I respond in those ways, in an angry way, it always has a good outcome, not a bad outcome. You know, that's what I realized. When I first done that once to in a situation, like one time I was in the kitchen and like I was having like 15 tickets, you know, and then like everyone was trying to like get in my way and like tell me like, oh, you're doing this wrong. I, I kind of like just yelled at them like, yo, like shut the fuck up. Let me do my work. <laughs> And and then they just kind of shut up and just stopped it. And that's how I gone through that service, you know? There's no anger after. I just expressed it in that moment. And after I was cool, you know? Yeah. So it's sometimes these feelings, sadness, depression, anger, sometimes they're just necessary. That's why we have them. We're human, you know? Yeah. Again, you know, uh, it's... As when I when they first came up, I was like, "Yo, am I traumatized again?" <laughs> I was wondering that, but no, no, you're not. Right, it's normal. It's normal to have these feelings, it's and you weren't like festering, like you weren't like looping that over and over and over and focusing on it. Just like, oh, anger. Okay. Yeah, you're like a child in a way. You know, you're a child. When you're ang when something comes up and you feel angry, you can feel so intensely angry now. And then it's gone, you know? And next moment you're like, la 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 daddy, playing with your friends, you know? Like, kids don't hold on to shit. When you're adults, we're so stupid because we. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. Adults are so dumb. They just hold on to all this shit. Yeah. It's so unnecessary. Like, kids are smart, bro. They're smarter. Maybe when we're adults, we logically know things, we're trained and stuff, but fuck, that means nothing, bro. You're not, no, yeah, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's like we have so much conditioning from society, from family, religion, culture, mm. like just all this stuff that we're operating from rather than a child who's like, oh, I love butterfly, you know, butterflies or whatever, you know, just kind of having that sense of like awe and wonder about the world and curiosity. Yeah, that yeah. odd curiosity. Hmm. That's that's the beauty of being in a blank slate, you know. That's why releasing, in a way, when you ask my question, that question, what releasing is, it's kind of like we start with the blank slate. Then our conditioning, we start to scribble on that blank slate. We scribble, 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 scribble. Now you're older, you're 25, and there's like basically the entire paper is black. And now it's your job to slowly get that eraser and just erase it. <laughs> I like that. Yeah, you just clean that window. Clean, clean that window. <laughs> and then you realize, oh, dude, this window is pretty freaking cool, you know? Oh, this is nice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And some people, when they clean the window, maybe they clean a little bit and they're like angry because the whole entire window isn't cleaned yet. <laughs> you know what I mean? I'm there. Yeah, no, I got I, I, there like, God damn it. Yeah. It's like it's like most of the windows clean. You had this one spot like, damn this. I have this one spot that's not clean, you know. No, yeah, I, 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 I've been there, and I still, I still do that. And then I have to check myself. Like, hold on, yeah, what am I focusing on here? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But sometimes, you know, doubts and all that stuff. Like, actually, when they're coming from clarity, 
those feelings are actually meant to guide you towards the right path, right? For example, if the, a doubt comes up if you're when you're coaching and you don't have any training, that does not necessarily mean you're insecure. That might mean that you actually might need training. So you're going to find a program mm. to do, you know? Sometimes these type of feelings are guides, you know? But you yeah. re-entiate. <laughs> Right. It's like the emotions and the thought. That's that's a that's a cool way to look at it, man. I like that. And and being able to kind of pick up on what what does that actually mean rather than the projections of, you know, our negative conditioning of what yeah. we think that means. Right. Um I was going somewhere with that. <laughs> no. What does that mean? You know, no. Um yeah. Yeah, no. So I like how you just kind of like reframe that and it's like yeah. Oh. That means this. Yeah. It's a guide. It, it yeah. And many when you're in that healing path, you might sometimes get in a habit of letting every being like, oh, whatever comes up, I have to let go. Yes, you let that go, yes. But you have to realize that everything also has a there's some things that also have a purpose that come up. Actually, everything has a purpose that comes up, even the negative shit. You know? They're there for a good reason. Mm. So it's don't be stuck in the path where, oh yeah, this is a shit in judgments and judging that feeling that, oh, wait, I'm not meant to have this feeling. I'm supposed to be that peace and love, you know, and it's coming up. No, no, it's coming up for, for a reason, you know, figure out why it's coming up, you know? Yeah. And even the judgments, man, they come up for a reason as well. Yeah, yeah. Judge yeah. judgments come up for a reason too. See, normally we'd be not interested in judging things, but when there's unprocessed pain inside you, that might be that unprocessed pain might be projected and turned into judgments. You know what I mean? Yep. And that, like, okay, that's a sign. There's something I'm not processing yet. Hmm. All right, man. Last question here. Mm. What do you think you would have told younger Sean? Maybe like two, three years ago. What would I tell younger Sean? I troll yeah. him. I troll him. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, I pretend to be a ghost. I'd be like, ooh. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I might pull Annabelle on him or something. <laughs> a what? A Annabelle? What is yeah. that? Like pull like an Annabelle on him, you know, place like a doll <laughs> on his oh, bed. Oh, dude! And then <laughs> because you know what, it's a joke, but like at the same time, I wouldn't say shit to him. You know, I wouldn't say shit. I don't want to interfere really? with what was already then, what was meant to happen then. You know, hmm. perfect, bro. Even your shit. Even your shit is perfect. Thank you, man. Yeah. <laughs> I've been worried about my shit, man. It hasn't been coming. No, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> yeah, even your <laughs> No, I like that. Even your shit is perfect. Yeah. It has a reason. There's a purpose. Yeah. There's meaning. Yeah. Be a fly. Uh, shit. <laughs> <laughs> and on that note... <laughs> How can um how can people contact you? They they want to work with you. They want to transform fear to love. Mm. How can they uh, how can they contact you? Always you know just shoot a message, bro. Shoot a DM. You know, on I could, Facebook. Yeah, and you know what? If my schedule is getting a little tight, but I'll put on my calendar as well. You know, and you know what? Anyone who just wants to talk, you know, I'm down. You know. Like, you don't have to be a potential client for me to have a good conversation with you or have a releasing session with you. I don't want that. Like, I, like I'm like i happy if someone wants to get to work with me. That's great. But at the same time, like, I'm open to helping everyone, you know? Even maybe you might want just to find a little shift of per perception in your life. Shoot me a text. I don't care. Mm -hmm. That will you know, it's, yeah, that's it, I guess. Yeah. That's good, man. 
Is there anything um, that, that you're working on or you want to promote? Mm, no, no. I think, you know, I guess fear the love. Check out my shit, you know. It's very good. <laughs> I guess. Check out Justin's work. Do a breakthrough call with him. He needs it. He, no, he doesn't need it, but like, you know. <laughs> I need it. I need it. No. He, need, he needs your love. <laughs> I do. I do need that love. So show me some love. Show Sean some love. And um, guys, I appreciate you. Thank you for tuning in. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I had like a catchphrase, but I'm not going to use that anymore. So thank yeah. you guys. And I hope to see you soon. Bye.